People have been procrastinating for thousands of years. Just like you, they put things off, they delayed, they made excuses, they hoped deadlines would never come due. This caused them anxiety, it pissed their colleagues and families off, it created problems and most of all it wasted time. Twenty centuries ago, the Roman era Stoic philosopher Seneca joked that the one thing fools all have in common is that they are always getting ready to live, but they never do it. Is that who you want to be? Of course not. This video will help you take ownership of your life. So to know what makes us procrastinate, let's start with the, the definition. Procrastination is the act of avoiding doing what you know you should be doing. It comes from the Latin procrastinare, to postpone or delay, and the Greek akrasia, a lack of self-control or the state of acting against one's better judgment. Procrastinating is an ancient problem. No one has anything finished because we have kept putting off into the future all our undertakings. It is to do everything as if it were the last thing you were doing in your life. And stop being aimless, stop letting your emotions override what your mind tells you. The consequences of procrastinating are alarming. Procrastination can lead to poor mental health, decreased job performance, hypertension and cardiovascular disease. The worst consequence of procrastination, at least as far as the Stoics were concerned, procrastination is the thief of time. Stop waiting for the perfect time. We don't abandon our pursuits because we despair of ever perfecting them. We want things to go perfectly so we tell ourselves that we'll get started once the conditions are right, or once we have our bearings. When, really, it'd be better to focus on making do with how things actually are. Churchill's line was, the maxim, nothing avails but perfection may be spelt shorter, paralysis. Aurelius reminded us, don't await the perfection of Plato's Republic. He wasn't expecting the world to be exactly the way he wanted it to be. But Marcus knew instinctively that he alone can do good who knows what things are like and what their situation is. Psychologists speak of cognitive distortions, exaggerated thinking patterns that have a destructive impact on the life of the patient. One of the most common is known as all or nothing thinking. Examples of this include thoughts like, I'm good at something or I'm horrible at it. If it's not a complete success, it is a total failure. This sort of extreme thinking is associated with depression and frustration and of course procrastination. How could it not be? Perfectionism rarely begets perfection, only disappointment. Pragmatism has no such hang-ups. It'll take what it can get. We're never going to be perfect, if there is even such a thing. We're human, after all. Our pursuits should be aimed at progress, however little that it's possible for us to make. Putting things off is the biggest waste of life. It snatches away each day as it comes and denies us the present by promising the future. The greatest obstacle to living is expectancy, which hangs upon tomorrow and loses today. The whole future lies in uncertainty. Live immediately. The lazy never do what they're supposed to do, for a multitude of reasons. It's too hard, it takes too long, they don't feel like it. Those prone to procrastination merely put things off until the minute. They tell themselves, oh, I'm definitely going to do it, but not right this second. I've got time later in the week. This is most of us. We care about getting the important stuff done. Often we care so much it eats at us in the form of anxiety, except we don't want to do it right now, which only adds to the anxiety. So we rationalize our procrastination and make perfect scenarios in our head about our future selves, definitely putting the ball over the goal line in time, even with some seconds to spare. Whether it's the college paper we're putting, the stack of dishes in the sink, the pile of clothes that need to be folded, the emails we need to reply to, the proposal we want to start writing. It can sometimes feel like there is force out there in the universe which presses down on us as we go through life trying to do the right thing, the smart thing, the things we know we have to do. We don't tell ourselves, I'm never going to write my symphony. Instead we say, I am going to write my symphony, I'm just going to start tomorrow. We might even think putting it off is better because we'll be better rested or more prepared. We fear the unknown. Don't let your imagination be crushed by life as a whole. Don't try to picture everything bad that could possibly happen and ask, why can't I endure it? You'll be embarrassed to answer. A study concluded that procrastination is an emotion regulation problem, not a time management problem. We procrastinate because we're thinking about all the things that might happen rather than just getting started on doing what we have to do. Maybe you're facing a difficult conversation. You're putting it off because you're afraid of what might come of it. Maybe you're thinking about taking on a new project. 
You're putting it off because it feels like it's beyond your limits. Maybe you've long wanted to move across the country. You're putting it off because you're afraid of starting over in a new place all by yourself. Those are legitimate fears, especially in our heads. It is a timeless truth that many of the things we worry about never come to happen. As Seneca wrote, there are more things likely to frighten us than there are to crush us. We suffer more often in imagination than in reality. Accordingly, some things torment us more than they ought, some torment us before they ought, and some torment us when they ought not to torment us at all. Okay, it helps to know why we procrastinate, but most of us always have at least a vague sense of why we put things off. What we need is what the Stoics can provide, practical tactics for beating procrastination, for muting that voice in our heads that tells us we can always just do it later, for combating our perfectionist tendencies, for stepping confidently into intimidating projects and tasks. Don't let your imagination be crushed by life as a whole. Stick with the situation at hand and ask, why is this so unbearable? Why can't I endure it? You'll be embarrassed to answer. Our imagination runs wild, envisioning all the ways things can go wrong, or how long this project is going to take, or why we couldn't possibly achieve that goal. I it can sometimes be useful in preparing us for the future and making us ready for potential adversity. But Aurelius well understood that it can more often become crippling fear that will paralyze us from any useful action which is why his advice was to keep in mind that a life is built action by action. All we can ever do is focus on completing the task at hand. Nobody writes a book, he would say. They write one sentence, then another, then another. In the sports world, players are taught to ignore the big picture and focus instead on doing the absolutely smallest things well, practicing with full effort, finishing a specific play, converting on a single possession. Tackle the most important task first. Yes, you can, if you do everything as if it were the last thing you were doing in your life and stop being aimless, stop letting your emotions override what your mind tells you, stop being hypocritical, self-centered, irritable. Marcus Aurelius was under a lot of tension. Make no mistake, the ancient world was not some quiet, peaceful place. It too was filled with crises and distractions, gossip and ambitious goal setting. All the temptations we face today have their analogues in the past, plus things were scarier, deadlier and more precarious. So we should listen to the command that Marcus Aurelius gave himself on one of those trying days when he was struggling to stay focused. Concentrate every minute like a Roman, like a man, he wrote, on doing what's in front of you with precise and genuine seriousness, tenderly, willingly, with justice. It's likely that Marcus would tackle his most difficult tasks first. From his stepfather Antoninus, Marcus learned how to work long hours and stay in the saddle. He writes in meditations that he even admired the way Antoninus scheduled his bathroom breaks as they allowed him to work for long, uninterrupted periods. Marcus never shirked hard work or avoided his most unpleasant duties. He had a job to do, and he didn't complain about it. Never be overheard complaining, he wrote, not even to yourself. Putting off our responsibilities is easy, complaining is easy, both are as natural to us as breathing. But what good has either ever done for anyone in the long run? Sure, shaking your fist at the sky and venting your frustrations can feel liberating in the moment. But has it ever changed your circumstances for the better, solved your problems or made you happier? Has procrastinating ever made your life less stressful and more efficient? We're willing to bet the answer is no. This is why we must follow Marcus's lead and tackle our most important tasks first. If we can win that battle first, the rest of the day will be a breeze. In the overwhelming pressures of sport, as in life, process provides a way. A way to turn chaos and confusion and complexity into something clear and manageable and simple. The task at hand, the process. Whatever you want to call it, just remember that everything in life is built one small action at a time. Putting off our responsibilities is easy, complaining is easy, both are as natural to us as breathing. But what good has either ever done for anyone in the long run? Sure, shaking your fist at the sky and venting your frustrations can feel liberating in the moment. But has it ever changed your circumstances for the better, solved your problems or made you happier? Has procrastinating ever made your life less stressful and more efficient? We're willing to bet the answer is no. This is why we must lead and tackle our most important tasks first. If we can win that battle first, the rest of the day will be a breeze. 
In many circumstances, we do not deal with our affairs in accordance with correct assumptions, but rather we follow thoughtless habit. Every habit and capability is confirmed and grows in its corresponding actions, walking by walking and running by running. Therefore, if you want to do something, make a habit of it. If you don't want to do something, he said, make a habit of doing the opposite. For this reason, the Stoics were big on habits and routines. In a world where so much is out of our control, committing to a routine we do control, they said, was a way of establishing and reminding ourselves of our own power. Without a disciplined schedule, procrastination inevitably moves in with all the chaos and complacency and confusion. What was I going to do? What do I wear? What should I eat? What should I do first? What should I do after that? What sort of work should I do? Should I scramble to address this problem or rush to put out this fire? That's torture. Seneca would call it a design problem. Life without a design is erratic, he wrote. As soon as one is in place, principles become necessary. I think you'll concede that nothing is more shameful than uncertain and wavering conduct and beating a cowardly retreat. This will happen in all our affairs unless we remove the faults that seize and detain our spirits, preventing them from pushing forward and making an all-out effort. The repetition itself becomes the important thing. It's a form of mesmerism. I mesmerize myself to reach a deeper state of mind. Routine is antithetical to procrastination, to the resistance. They feed on our uncertainty. Routine eliminates that uncertainty. We know what we do and when we do it. Procrastination is boxed out by the order and clarity you built. Since habit is such a powerful influence and we're used to pursuing our impulses to gain and avoid outside our own choice, we should set a contrary habit against that and where appearances are really slippery, use the counterforce of our training. When a dog is barking loudly because someone is at the door, the worst thing you can do is yell. To the dog, it's like you're barking too. When a dog is running away, it's not helpful to chase it. Again, now it's like you're both running. A better option in both scenarios is to give the dog something else to do. Tell it to sit, run in the other direction, break the pattern, interrupt the negative impulse. The same goes for us. When a bad habit reveals itself, counteract it with a commitment to a contrary virtue. Sometimes, when you find yourself procrastinating, it's best not to dig in and fight it. Instead, get up and take a walk to clear your head and reset instead. Try what is called productive procrastination. A kind of promiscuous working in which I procrastinate on one project by working on another. Sometimes switching between two or more projects until all the projects are done. Oppose established habits. Use the counterforce of training to get traction and make progress. Channel the negative impulse into something, anything positive. Get one small win. Well-being is attained by little and little, and nevertheless is no little thing itself. Each day you should acquire something that will fortify you against poverty, against death, indeed against other misfortunes as well. One gain per day, that's it. This is the way to curbing our procrastinating tendencies. Remembering that incremental, consistent, humble, persistent work is the way to improvement. Your business, your book, your career, your body, it doesn't matter. You build them with little things day after day. Just as long as you do something every day, that is the important thing. One thing a day adds up. One step at a time is all it takes. You just gotta get one small win. And the sooner you start, the better you'll feel and be. Stick to what's in front of you, idea, action, utterance. Focusing on outcomes is a good recipe for feeling overwhelmed and then procrastinating, which is why you should focus on process. Don't get caught up imagining what the results were going to be. Remind yourself that past and future have no power over you, only the present. In other words, stick with what you can control. This is explained by the metaphor of an archer. An archer will do whatever he can in order to hit the target. But once the arrow leaves the bow, the actual outcome is not up to him. Hitting the target is to be chosen, but not to be desired. That's the way I think about doing anything I try to accomplish in my life. I put forth my best effort, and I'm doing my best, so to reach people who may benefit from it. But I regard the actual outcome in terms of sales, attention, as a preferred indifferent. It really relieves a lot of pressure. The good archer is one who shoots well, which doesn't necessarily mean always hitting the target. The goal is to shoot well while not hitting the target, although paradoxically this may lead to one hitting the target more often. 
Whenever you find yourself contemplating the future, stressing over the target way out in the distance, letting your imagination get crushed by life as a whole, remind yourself of the archer. Focus on your form. Focus on the process. Be present. It will help you shoot better, but most importantly, it will help you live better. Be ruthless to the inessential. It is essential for you to remember that the attention you give to any action should be in due proportion to its worth. For then you won't tire and give up, if you aren't busying yourself with lesser things beyond what should be allowed. Procrastination can often be a product of overwhelm. We have so much on our to-do list we don't even know where to begin, so we don't begin. When we have our attention pointed in so many different directions, we have it pointed nowhere. If you seek tranquility, do less, not nothing less. Do only what's essential, which brings a double satisfaction. To do less is better. Follow this advice today and every day. So much of what we think we must do, so much of what we end up doing is not essential. Don't let it swirl around and overwhelm you. Rip off the chains of obligation to things that are inessential. Then you'll be able to better do what is essential and get a taste of that tranquility. A double satisfaction. We hope by applying these things you stop procrastinating and having a great life then. Thanks for watching.